All right, so now we're going to talk about Gaussian elimination. So let me just sort of recall what we've done so far. So what we know so far is the following. We know how to solve um, upper triangular matrices. using back substitution, backward substitution. And we also know how to do this for lower triangle matrices. Using forward substitution. So what Gaussian elimination does for you is the following. So the goal is the following. So if A is invertible, we want to solve the linear system AX is equal to B, obviously. And the idea behind this in the context of Gaussian elimination is that we're going to reduce this general matrix A right, to an upper triangular matrix. apply back substitution. Okay, so um, what we're going to try to do to begin with is that we're going to um, think of um, this system of equations as a bunch of um, you know, E equations, I'm sorry, N equations. So let's just define it as follows, right? So you have N separate equations. I'm going to label them E1 to EN. Okay, so this A11X1, AN1XN is equal to B1, and then AN1X1, a n n x n is equal to b n. Okay, and <clears throat> so you have probably done this before. That what you can do with um, equations is that you can multiply them by a non-zero uh, scalar value. It's like on both sides, both the left and right hand sides, and then you can add them uh, to any of the other equations. All right. So we want a way of bookkeeping those kind of operations um, in some sort of matrix representation, okay? And the way you're going to do this is to uh, consider what is called the augmented matrix. Right, so there's this augmented matrix. So I'm going to denote this like this. So this is this A, and then there's a line here, and there's the B vector. So essentially what happens is that each row now has n plus 1 entries. The n entries coming from the coefficients for the A matrix, as well as one entry coming from uh, the right-hand side. Okay? And, and again, you can think of each of these rows as corresponding to one of these equations which we have. Okay? So let's uh, look at an example of this. All right, so say we have the following uh, linear system, 1, 1, 1, 
one, two, four, one, three, nine, acting on x1, x2, x3 is equal to one, one, one. Right, this is my matrix A, this is the unknown vector x, and then this is the right hand side B. Right? So with that in mind, I can write down the augmented matrix associated with this, which I denote again by A line and a B. And this is really nothing more than the following, right? So you write down the entries coming from A, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3, 9. And you just sort of have this line just to remind me that they're sort of partitioned. And then, sorry, this is a minus 1. So 1 minus 1, 1, 1 minus 1, 1, okay? So this has four columns and three rows. All right, um, and again, you can sort of see that each of the rows corresponds to one of the equations, which I call E1, E2, and E3. Okay, so um, again, the idea behind Gaussian elimination, as you probably know, is to make entries below the main diagonal uh, zero through elementary row operations. Okay, so Gaussian elimination. That's the following, right? You make all entries below the main diagonal zero through uh, what are called elementary row operations. And as um, I mentioned, elementary row operations involve multiplying a row by some non-zero uh, number or by adding one row to the other, right? So those are sort of examples. Um, or more generally, applying or adding or subtract or adding a multiple one row to another row, okay? So let's look at how we can do Gaussian elimination on this problem, step by step. Okay, so let's look at this example. Right, so you start off with this matrix, this augmented matrix, one, 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 two, four, one, three, nine, one minus one, one. Okay, the first thing you can do is to essentially subtract the first row from the second and third rows. Okay, so so I say equation 2 gets mapped to equation 2 minus equation 1. And that has a net effect of zeroing out these two entries uh, here, right? Okay, and then equation 3 gets mapped to equation 2 minus equation 3. All right, so I keep the first row what it is, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, and then I subtract the first row from the second row and then put it here. Okay, so... 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 minus 1 is 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. Right. And I look at the third row. The third row I'm going to map to, um, I'm sorry, what am I doing? Equation 3 minus equation 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0, 3 minus 1 is 2. 9 minus 1 is 8, 1 minus 1 is 0, okay? And so now this is the new augmented matrix. Um, <coughs> and again, what we see is that the first column below the diagonal has now been zeroed out, okay? So now what you can do is you can sort of add some multiple of the second row to the third row to zero out this non-zero entry below the diagonal. And so that's what I'm going to do next. So equation 3 is now going to be mapped to equation 3 minus equation 2. Uh, actually, 2 times equation 2, 
right? Because I need, I need a two times one to, to zero out this two here. So one, 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 zero, one, three. So the first two rows are now kept what they are. Zero, okay, so zero minus zero, that doesn't matter. You can easily check that if you do this process, um, you, you only really have to worry about the sub, the entries later on, if you will, okay? Because these are already been zeroed out, it's like by the previous step. Okay, so two minus two times one is zero, which is what I want, eight minus, 2 times 3 is 2, and 0 minus 2 times minus 2 is 4, all right? Okay, so you can see now that you've reduced A into an upper triangular matrix. All the entries below the diagonal are 0. So now I can do back substitution on this. So now I can do backward substitution. Right, so 2 times x3 is equal to 4, which means that x3 is equal to 2. Right, and then x2 plus 6 is equal to minus 2, which means x2 is equal to minus 8. And then x1 minus 8 plus 2 is equal to 1, which means that x1 is equal to 7. So x1, x2, x3 is equal to 7 minus 8 and 2. Okay. All right. Okay, so you can verify that that uh, solves the original system of equations, which you wanted. So the disadvantage of Gaussian elimination is the following, right? Because we sort of carried on the operations, including this B vector. Um, every one of these steps has to be redone, even if this A matrix is the same. So the remark is as follows, right? All the steps have to be repeated. For each new B, even if uh, A stays the same. Okay, so what we're going to be doing then is we're going to do what is called LU decomposition, uh, which is a way to work just on the A matrix in such a way that you write down the A matrix as a product of a lower triangular matrix and upper triangular matrix. And then when you do that, you'll end up in a situation where um, <coughs> you can, um, you have a system, it's like where because of the fact that you factorized A into L and U, you can use that factorization repeatedly in order to solve for different Bs, basically, right? So that's the advantage, if you will, it's like over Gaussian elimination, is that you spend a little bit more effort to factorize A into L times U, um, but once you've done that, it's like uh, the cost for solving for different Bs while keeping A fixed is, is much smaller, okay? All right, so, um, Okay, so let's uh, say a little bit now about uh, identity matrices. Um, and actually, I guess I should say that um, another way of um, <coughs> using Gaussian elimination, it's like, uh, is to um, essentially compute the inverse, it's like using Gaussian elimination. So let me sort of briefly talk about how to go about doing that uh, in a not too difficult way. Um, so definition, all right, so, so we're going to have introduced the idea of the identity matrix, 
right? So you have I is the entry as the matrix with the, uh, ones along the diagonals and zeros uh, elsewhere. It's an n by n matrix. And it has the property that any matrix times I, which the identity is I times the, the matrix A, which is A itself. Okay, and then with that, it's like we can define what is called the inverse matrix, right? Right, if there exists a matrix B such that um, A times B is the identity and B times A is the identity, uh, then B is equal to A inverse is said to be the inverse of A. Okay, and of course it's like the advantage of being able to compute the inverse matrix is that then th um, in order to solve a linear equation, all you have to do is to um, apply the inverse matrix to the, the right-hand side B, okay, using matrix vector products. So, um, so you can ask, well, how do you actually go about computing the inverse matrix, say, using Gaussian elimination, okay? Um, so let me sort of briefly talk about that, and the idea is, in some sense, pretty straightforward. Um, So essentially what you're doing is in some sense you're solving, um, one way to think about it is that uh, you're using the fact that you're working with linear transformations and so you know, um, you know, it's like, um, you know what happens um, to, yeah, so you know what happens, it's like to, it's like an arbitrary element as long as you know what happens to a basis uh, set of vectors, okay? So let, let's see what I mean by that, okay? So we want A x equals to B, right? And, uh, and you know that if you apply the inverse matrix A inverse to this, right? This is just A inverse B by definition. So that means that the identity times x is equal to A inverse uh, acting on B. Okay. Um, because A inverse times A is just the identity, right? And this obviously implies that x is equal to A inverse B, which is sort of what uh, you probably know. And you can compute A inverse uh, by the following uh, approach. So if you look at this augmented matrix, uh, and previously we had augmented it by a single uh, column vector, which is B, but you can imagine augmenting it by three or N column vectors, which is the entire identity matrix, okay? So this is the same basic concept. Now I'm taking two matrices and sort of gluing them together. And then I want to do, I want to convert this type of augmented matrix into um, the identity uh, and something, and that something is going to turn out to be the inverse, okay, by elementary row operations. So I want to do this using elementary row operations. Okay, and um, all right, so anyway, so if it's possible to take this augmented matrix and through elementary row operations, convert it so that this part of the block, um, this part of the augmented matrix is the identity, then whatever is in this other part of the augmented matrix is going to be A inverse, all right? So the claim is the following. I can reduce A to I uh, by Gaussian elimination. And what, how much it's going to cost is that the total number of floating point operations
which is uh, what I mean by that is sort of additions and multiplications. Well, also, also subtractions and divisions. Um, so the number of floating point operations, oftentimes denoted by flops, right, is of the order of uh, four thirds uh, n cubed, where a is a n by n matrix. Okay, so um, right. So this is sort of the setup. It's like what we're going to look at, uh, and this is going to end up leading. Uh, it's going to end up uh, leading us. It's like to this notion of what is called LDU decomposition. Okay, so let me just stop here for now.